Now that we've taken a look at parametric equations as an alternate way to graph x and y coordinates using two different functions, we're going to look at another option for graphing in a completely different graphing system. The question's going to be, what other graphing systems can we use? Normally, when we've graphed a point up to now, we've said we're going to graph a point really with an x, y coordinate, where x is how far we go to the right and y is how far we go up. However, we could graph using a different version of reference points. And this leads to what are called polar coordinates. The idea behind polar coordinates is we've got the coordinate system. And instead of giving an x, y coordinate, what we're going to do is we're going to have some distance, which we will call r, that is going to be some angle theta away from the polar axes, or the, what we traditionally have called the x axes, to get to our point. So a point is now made up of an ordered pair of r comma theta where r represents the radius, or distance, from the center. And theta represents the angle that we open up to. Now, what's interesting about polar coordinates, then, is unlike the xy coordinate system, where there's only one way to get the, to the point 4 comma 7, with polar coordinates, there are multiple ways to get to the same point. They are not unique coordinates to represent the same point. Let's say we wanted to look at a point over here. And if I were to draw it out, let's say that radius has a distance of 2, and the angle is a distance of pi over 4, a 45 degree angle. If that's the case, then our radius is 2, and our angle is pi over 4, and that's going to represent that point. But that's not the only way to get to that point. I could have taken my angle and gone around a full circle and a little bit more. 2 pi plus another pi over 4 would be 9 pi over 4. And so we end up with the same radius of 2, but an angle of 9 pi over 4, representing the exact same point. In fact, there's a third way to represent that exact same point, And that is to take an angle that goes around to the distance exactly opposite it. That angle would be 5 pi over 4. But then our radius is going to come out the other direction. And to show the radius coming the other direction, we'll say the radius is negative. And so we end up with this point negative 2 comma 5 pi over 4. And we've got three ways to represent the exact same point. In fact, there are an infinite number of ways that we could represent this exact same point, including negative angles and angles that are several times around the entire unit circle. So polar coordinates are not unique, but they do provide a way to do a lot of graphs in a much more convenient way. But before we do that, let's take a look at how we can do conversions between polar and rectangular coordinates. And to set these conversions up, let's take a look at a point that is drawn by some radius r and some angle theta. And if we were to drop a triangle on that, we end up with an x distance to the right and a y distance up. Well, we know that the cosine of theta the cosine of the angle is the adjacent x over r. And multiplying by r tells us that the x coordinate is equal to r cosine theta. Similarly, if we took the sine of the angle, it would be the opposite over r, or y over r. And multiplying both sides by r, we get r sine theta is equal to the y coordinate. We also have ways to convert the other direction. 
we know from the Pythagorean theorem on this exact triangle that x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. And so if we know x and y, we should be able to calculate r. Also, if we know x and y, we can use the tangent of theta to equal the opposite over the adjacent, or y over x. And so tangent of theta is equal to the ratio of our coordinates. Let's see if we can use these conversion properties to help us convert maybe the point 3 comma negative 4 to polar coordinates. Well, we've got the x and y, so we know that r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. So r squared is equal to 3 squared, which is 9, plus 4 squared, which is 16. So r squared is 25, and our radius must be 5. We also know that the tangent of the angle is equal to the ratio of y over x, negative 4 over 3. And if we take the tangent inverse of both sides, it's not a pretty number, but we get negative 0.9273 approximately. And so we end up with the polar coordinate of 5 comma negative 0.9273 for our polar coordinate that's equal to 3 comma negative 4. Let's go the other direction. Let's convert the polar coordinate 4 comma 2 pi over 3 to a rectangular point. Well, to do that, we know x is equal to r cosine theta. And we know that y is equal to r sine theta from our formulas up above. So now we just have to plug in what we know, that x is equal to the radius of 4 times the cosine of 2 pi over 3. Or x is equal to 4 times the cosine of 2 pi over 3 is negative 1 half. So the x coordinate is negative 2. For the y coordinate, y is equal to the radius of 4 times the sine of 2 pi over 3. So y is equal to 4 times the sine of 2 pi over 3 is root 3 over 2, which reduces down to root 2. And we end up with the rectangular coordinate of negative 2 comma 2 root 2 being the exact same as the polar point 4 comma 2 pi over 3. Now that we've taken a look at how we can convert between rectangular and polar coordinates, we're ready for our next task, which is to see if we can actually plot points. And we're going to plot two points on this graph. We're going to plot the point 4 comma 5 pi over 3. And we're going to plot the point negative 3 comma negative 3 pi over 2. Now, when we're graphing in polar coordinates, we can convert them to rectangular coordinates and figure out where they should be. Or we can just graph them using our angles in what's called a polar grid. This here is our polar grid. And each circle represents a radius of 1. So we can kind of count out, just like we count out on our x-axis, of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. And we can see the growing radii coming out of the center. Here on this polar grid, every pi over 6 has been labeled. So we've got 0, pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, which is pi over 3. Then we end up with pi over 2, then 2 pi over 3, and 5 pi over 6, and then pi, and then 7 pi over 6 and then 4 pi over 3, and then 2 pi, or 3 pi over 2, and then 5 pi over 3, and 11 pi over 6, and then we're back around to 2 pi. And so you can see you're working yourself around. 
This one does not label the pi over 4s, but those would be just kind of in the middle. So if you wanted to, you needed a pi over 4, you could stick it right up in the middle. And you could label the pi over 4s in this graph as well. It's just kind of like a unit circle, but with a different radius uh, established for each coordinate point. So when we want to plot point A as 4 comma 5 pi over 3, I'll go over to an angle of 5 pi over 3, and I'll count out four radii, 1, 2, 3, 4. And that fourth radius out from 5 pi over 3 is point A. Similarly, with negative 3, negative 3 pi over 2, negative angles count backwards. So we're going to go the opposite direction. I'll do this one in green, because we did the first one in blue. Going the opposite direction, we've got uh, negative 3 pi over 2. If you count 1, 2, 3, negative 3 pi over 2 is up here at the top. But instead of coming vertically up towards negative 3 pi over 2, because the radius is negative, we're going to count backwards to three points. And that gives us a negative 3 radius, because we're going backwards away from the negative 3 pi over 2. And there becomes point B. So if that's how we plot points, then we're one step away from being able to actually graph polar equations. Let's take a look at that. Let's take a look at polar graphs. The first polar graph we're going to look at is r equals 4 plus 4 cosine of theta. And to set this up, we're going to take a bit of time with this so we can get good comfort with how these polar graphs work. We're going to look at all the common angles theta and see what radius they give us and see if we can graph what shape this is going to give us. Our common angles that we're going to look at is we're going to count every pi over 6. It does skip the pi over 4s. And we could include the pi over 4s if we wanted to. But uh, for the sake of time, I'm just going to do 0, 1 pi over 6, pi over 3, pi over 2, 2 pi over 3, 5 pi over 6, pi, 7 pi over 6, 4 pi over 3, 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 3, and 11 pi over 6. And then 2 pi would be coming back around to the same point. So I'm going to use my calculator to take a look at these. So let's pull up our calculator. On your calculator, in order to graph polar equations, we need to change the mode that we're in. If we click Mode, down a couple spots, you see Function is highlighted. Next to Function is PAR. That's for parametric equations, if you wanted to use your calculator for those. And the next is the polar equations. Let's go down to Polar Equations and hit Enter to highlight polar equations. And now when I hit the y equals, instead of saying y equals, it's actually going to say r equals. And we want r to equal 4 plus 4 cosine of theta. And now when we hit the x button, the xt theta in, we're going to end up with a theta for our variable. And then I'm going to hit Second Table. And I'm going to delete all of these values out that I don't want. And now I can start entering in my values. I enter in 0, and I see that the radius should be 8. If I enter in pi over 6, we see the radius should be 7.5, approximately. And then I can enter in pi over 3, and I see the radius should be approximately 6. And so I can go down and finish filling in to figure out what values I want to fill into my table. So when the, rate, when the angle is 0, the radius ends up being 8. Pi over 6 is approximately 7.5. Pi over 3 is approximately 6. Pi over 2 is 4. 2 pi over 3 comes out to 2. 5 pi over 6 comes out to 0.5. Pi is 0. 7 pi over 6 is 0.5. 4 pi over 3 is 2. 3 pi over 2 is 4. You start to see it's kind of looking symmetrical. 5 pi over 3 is 6. 
and 11 pi over 6 is 7.5, and you can see it's going to go to 8 next. So let's see what this graph looks like. When the angle is 0, the radius is 8. So I'll count out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 on a 0 radius. Then at pi over 6, that's the first line, it's 7.5. Pi over 3, it's 6. Pi over 2 is 4. 2 pi over 3 is 2. 5 pi over 6 is 1 half. And then at pi, it actually comes down and hits 0. And then 1 half and 2 and 4, and then 5 pi over 3, it goes out to 6, and 11 pi over 3, it comes out to 7.5, and then you can see it's going to go back around to 8. And so what we end up with is this interesting little curve that comes in. It almost looks like a squished heart. So I'm going to make that line a little bit thicker so we can get a real good C on what, what that graph looks like here. It curves in and then bounces out. And that's our polar graph. That is the function r equals 4 plus 4 cosine of theta. And actually, we can end up with some pretty gnarly looking graphs in polar coordinates. To save us some time, we're going to cheat, and we're going to look at some graphs on Desmos and kind of graph what these things look like. First, we're going to graph theta equals pi over 3. Actually, this pi over 3 option, let's see if we can kind of talk through what it's going to do. Pi over 3 means the angle is going to stay consistent at pi over 3 regardless of what the radius is equal to. Theta equals pi over 3 is just a line. So let's see if we can find something a little more interesting than that. Let's do r equals 2 cosine theta minus 3 sine of theta. When we graph that, r equals 2 cosine theta minus 3 sine theta. What we end up with is a kind of off-centered circle. This is the equation of a circle. Kind of was off-centered, but it was a circle nonetheless. Let's take a look at another equation. This one's kind of gnarly. Let's take a look at r equals theta over 3. r equals theta over 3 gives you a gnarly spiral. And as you scroll out, you see this only goes up to 12 pi. Yeah. The spiral only stops here because theta has been programmed to only go to 12 pi. But if theta keeps going, the spiral is going to keep going out and out and out. So theta equals pi over 3 is actually equal to a graph of a spiral, which is kind of cool. How about this one? r equals 3 plus 3 cosine of theta. r equals 3 plus 3 cosine theta. That's kind of similar to the one that we saw earlier. It looks like a squished heart. Something like that. How about this graph? r equals 2 plus 4 sine of theta. This one's interesting because it ends up with a little squiggly in the center, a little tiny circle on the inside. So that one's kind of neat in that it 
comes around and then it loops around before it finishes in the center. Kind of the classic polar graph is what's called the rows. R equals 3 sine of 2 theta. Let's take a look at this graph. This one gives us a nice little rose with four petals on it. Well, we can actually play with the number of petals by changing what's in front of theta. Turns out if the number's even, you end up with twice as many petals. So if I do 6 theta, I've got a 12-petal rose. But if it's odd, we end up with exactly that many petals. So if I do 5 theta, we get a 5-petal rose. So you can play with that and get some gnarly looking graphs in polar coordinates. Now, it might be useful, though, to be change a polar graph into a more familiar rectangular coordinates. And that takes a little bit of creative spark. So let's take a look at how we can do one last thing. And that is letter C, to transform polar to rectangular functions. Let's start by doing theta is equal to pi over 3. Well, we know this is probably going to be a line based on our little experiment with functions up above in Desmos, where we said if that angle is going to stay constant and the radius is going to change, you're just going to end up with a straight line. But to find out what that line is, what we know about theta is that the tangent of theta is equal to y over x by definition. So we can take the tangent of the angle, pi over 3, and that must be equal to y over x. And the tangent of pi over 3 is the square root of 3 equal to y over x. And so if we multiply both sides by x, we end up with x square root of 3 equals y. And that's a line through the origin with a slope of the square root of 3. That one's not too exciting. Let's try another one. Let's do r equals 3. Well, if the radius is going to stay consistent and the angle is going to change, you might expect this to be a circle because we keep the same radius and go all the way around the unit circle. We also know we've got a property that x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So plugging in what we know, x squared plus y squared equals 3 squared or 9. And that really doesn't need any simplifying. We recognize that from our conic sections as a circle with radius of 3. So let's try a more interesting graph than just r equals or theta equals. Let's try r equals 6 cosine theta minus 8 sine of theta. Now this one we're going to have to be a little more creative with. A nice little trick that can help us quite often is we're going to multiply both sides by r. And when I do that, we end up with r squared equals, and when I distribute the r, 6r cosine theta minus 8r sine of theta. And the reason that's nice is we know that r cosine theta is equal to x. And we know that r sine of theta is equal to y. And we know that r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. And so if we put that all together, we get x squared plus y squared equals 6x minus 8y. Now, it might not be clear what shape this is exactly. So let's move all the x and y's to the same side. So we have x squared minus 6x plus y squared plus 8y equals 0. And then if I try and complete the square on the x's, 
by adding 9, half of 6 squared, and adding 16, half of 8 squared, to both sides. The x's are a perfect square, x minus 3 squared, plus the y's are a perfect square, y plus 4 squared, equals 0 plus 9 plus 16 is 25. You'll recognize this as a conic section as well. It is a circle centered at 3, negative 4 with a radius of 5. Let's do one last function. Let's consider r equals secant theta tangent theta. Well, we don't really have any formulas with secant and tangent. But we do know that secant is 1 over the cosine, and tangent is sine over cosine. And if I multiply both sides of this equation by the cosine squared of theta to clear out the denominators, we get r cosine theta squared equals the sine of theta. And where this gets interesting is if we multiply both sides by r, that's kind of our favorite trick of polar coordinates, to multiply both sides by r, we get r squared cosine theta equals r sine theta. And we should recognize that r sine theta is just y. And r cosine theta is x. And if it's all squared, that must be x squared. So what we really have is x squared equals y is the same function as r equals secant theta times tangent theta. This is a parabola. So this video was a quick introduction to this new coordinate system of polar coordinates where we can graph things using a radius and an angle theta. Take a look at the homework assignment to practice some of these. And good luck to you. Let me know if you have any questions. And we will see you in class.